The lesson that we are focusing on will be lesson four, the Bible, our map to God's kingdom. The question comes to mind, what is the Bible? The word Bible comes from Biblia in Latin and Bilibius in Greek, meaning book or suitable, which we can really say that that is a fitting and suitable word for the Bible since it is a book for all people and for all times. It's a book like no other, and it's in a class all of its own. There are other terms that may be used for the Bible, such as the Holy Scriptures, God's Holy Word, the Word of God, or just the Scriptures. All of these meanings means sacred writings. The Bible itself is compiled of 66 books and letters written by more than 40 different human authors during a period of approximately 1,500 years. The authors of many of these books, some were kings, some were fishermen, some were priests, some were government officials, some were farmers, some were shepherds, and some were even doctors. From all of this diversity comes an incredible unity with the common theme woven throughout this as an inspiring library. The Bible itself is a library within one single cover. The Bible is divided into two parts. The main two parts are the Old Testament and the New Testament. A little bit about the Old Testament. The Old Testament compiles or consists of 39 books written by prophets such as Moses, David, Isaiah, which is a story of a nation. And when we look at the divisions of those uh, 39 books, five books are classified as the Pentateuch, which includes Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Then there are the historical books, which are 12 books, which are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. And then we have the poetic books, which consist of five books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. And then there are the prophet, prophetical, which consists of 17 books, major prophets and minor prophets. We have five different major prophets, which are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And then we have our minor prophets, which goes on such as jo Hosea, Joel, Amon, Obadiah, Jonah, Michael, Nahum, Nebaka, Zavarna, Haggai, and Zechariah, and Malachi. If we were to look at the New Testament, the New Testament consists of 27 books. And these was written by those who knew Jesus or were under the guidance of those who did know Jesus, which is a story of a man named Jesus. The historical books consist of five books, which are referred to the first four as the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, along with the book of Acts. Then there's the Pauline Episcopals, which is 13 books, all written by Paul. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philema. Then there's the non pollen Episcopals, which consist of nine books. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Some attribute the book of Hebrew as the author as being Paul because of the greeting in which the book is open with. So the main thing is that the Bible is the inflatable word of God. There's no mistakes. There's no changes. There's not anything that can be added to or taken away from the word of God. It is a source of the Christian faith that contains the words of God and how a Christian is to apply the words of God to his or her life. The central theme of the Bible is God's plan of salvation. His way of providing deliverance from sin and spiritual death through repentance and faith. 
In the Old Testament, the concept of salvation is rooted in the disobedience and the deliverance of the Israelites from their disobedience from the Egypt while they were in bondage. And you can find this in the book of Exodus. The New Testament reveals the source of salvation through Jesus Christ. By faith in Jesus, believers are saved from God's judgment of sins and its consequences, which is eternal death. The Bible is the history of God's interaction with human humans, with man and female, and his manual for life here on this earth. God reveals himself to us. We discover his nature and his character, his love, his justice, his forgiveness, and his truth. Psalms 119.105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. One might ask the question, why do we study the Bible or the Word of God? 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. We need to study for ourselves because God's Word is the most direct way to get to know about Him and the only way to know what God will is for us and what God expects of us. It is by doing his will that we learn of him and that we are able to abide in him. The word that says, if we abide in him, he will abide in us. So in order for us to get to know him, we must know what his characters are, what he expects of us. So in order to do this, we cannot wait to be spoon-fed the word of God. We need to study it for ourselves and develop our own personal relationship with God. The relationship that we have with God was separated because when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, that separated man from God. So God had to find himself a way, and that's what when he uh, sent his son Jesus. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then it goes on in the, sec- in the 17, it says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's all because of God's love that he wrote the word, that he inspired men to write the word in order that we would know and develop a relationship with him. So God's word is our way of developing a personal relationship with him. Deve- developing and maintaining an, an intimate relationship with God is too critical to be left undone. It is something that has to be done because rather than us relying on others and we are going by what he say or she says, it's up to us to get into the word ourselves and then that way we learn ourselves. And by doing this, it, it equips us with his word and we know our purpose in life and we are able to do what God has called us to do. God is the most fascinating subject in the universe. Learning who he is, what he has created, why he cares about us, and what he would like us to do in return for all the gifts he gives us can take a lifetime of studying. He gave us breath this morning when he woke us up. He causes us to walk and move, which sometimes we don't even know how to explain. We don't know how to explain the seasons. We, all we know that it is God, and he shows it daily each day in his ways and his sounds and, and how he reveals himself through us. So what we have to do is to study his word. The more we study the word of God, his scriptures, our lives will begin to change. And the more we apply it, we will, be more fully come, we will more fully come to understanding the love of God of the Word of God, and then we will have a love for the Word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 also says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. One thing about it, as we look at this verse, Timothy lists four profitable things that can be obtained through the study of the Word. And we're going to break those things down. He talks about doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So let us begin to look at some of the rewards of studying the Bible. 
The first one is doctrine. The doctrine is our core beliefs on what we believe in. Parkway Christian Center has core beliefs, which were, which were introduced at earlier in our starting point class. And those are the items that you need to study in order to know the core beliefs of, and the doctrine of the church in which you are a part of. And the studying of the scripture is doctrine because it is the body of beliefs, principles, and teachings foundation to our Christian faith. So learning the core values are very important because then we know and we will know what God is looking for and what we can expect in our churches. If we wish to know what we believe and why we believe in it, we should make Bible study a regular habit in our Christian walk. Some churches and denominations have accepted and pr promoted erroneous doctrine over time that find no basics or foundations in the Bible. They are just going regular on traditions of men that have replaced the authority of the scripture. And if uh, the core values are listed in our, hand, in our starting point book. So we need to make sure that we know the doctrine of the church in which we are part of. Are they the tradition of men? Are they anointed under the authority of the Holy Spirit as given by God himself? Then it's for reproof. The studying of God's word can set us straight when we either doing or believing something that violates its teaching. It can show us where we are wrong so long as we are willing to look at the Bible objective and with an open heart. We have to learn that when we are doing wrong, we have rules and regulations for all things. We have rules and regulations for the highways. We have rules and regulations for the oceans. We have rules and regulations for all types of rules and regulations. It's the same way with the word of God. God has the, the right points and he will take these and he will teach them to you. But the main way we are to learn them when we are going wrong is to know the truth and the right way to do it. And we need to study the scriptures so we can help us to renew our minds by the transforming of our minds as we are conformed to be more and more like God. And in order to do this, to be more and more like God, we have to study his word. And when it gives us a correction, we should not get upset with it because of the fact that God's word is there to equip us and to correct us and to reproof us of all and cover us with of all unrighteousness. Then it comes the instruction in righteousness. The first baby steps for a newborn Christian can be both very exciting and sometimes it can be very confusing, confusing, excuse me. And one thing about it is many times you have a lot of questions and concern. What is permissible? What is not? What pleases God and what offends him? In short, how do we live? Diligently studying of the word along with the indwelling conviction of the Holy Spirit, God who wrote it can clarify all of our concerns. The Bible instructs the Christian in righteousness by showing us how we can live a God-honoring life and fulfill the Lord's purpose in our own walk. It also calls us to avoid sinning. To avoid sinning, the word tells us in Psalms 119.11, it says, My word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And because we were born in sin, we need to return back to God. And in order to show us how to do this, the Bible not only shows the Christian what to do, but also what not to do. Scripture should not be viewed, viewed as a guidebook of rules and regulations that's compiled and just for, just for any purpose. But when we diligently stu study it, we hide it in our hearts, making it teach us uh, making its teaching, excuse me, making its teachers an integral part of who we are. His word become a part of us. It's something that we see daily in our lives. We don't have to read it because why? We can regurgitate it based upon what is happening at that time. It may be someone that just need words of encouragement. We can find it in the word of God. There may be someone that has done and has gone down the same road that you went down. But at the same time, through the word and the leading of the Holy Spirit, you can help them correct by avoiding sinning. And also on a regular basis, meaningful spent time 
in the word will do much to keep us from sinning against God. Because the more we study his word, we learn of his word, we learn of his expectations, then we know when we are doing wrong and when we are doing right. It is the power of the Holy Spirit within the believer that overcomes the power of sin and temptation. And a working knowledge of his word brings a closeness that keeps us plunged into that power source. God is our all-powerful. He's an all-sovereign God. He has all power in his hand. He knows all things. He sees all things, and he hears all things. And so we've got to learn how to avoid sin because when the Holy Spirit chastises us and let us know that we are wrong, we will learn how to go to our fellow man and how to apologize. We will learn how to forgive. We will learn how to love our enemies with the help of the Holy Spirit. And this is all through taught in the Word of God. The Word of God is also a light to my path. The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, showing us which way to go. Have you ever wandered down a dark road without any headlights and didn't know where to go? You would stumble into things. There are times when we, being in sin, we were walking in darkness. But when God came into our lives, he took his radiant light and he shined, shined it on each of us to let us know that I've got your back. He is the way, the truth, and the light. And he leads us through that life. That life and his, the way of our life as we travel down this journey is the fact that God will let his word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path that will guide us in the right and narrow way. Through the knowledge of the perception of scriptures that we continually walk in the illumination of the light of the word. So that's what we want to do. We want to walk in God's word. Then it gives you wisdom. Proverbs 1, 1 and 2 says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Wisdom comes from God. Knowledge comes from man. The book of Proverbs' purpose is the, in the Bible is to impart wisdom on its readers. And the same can really be said for the study of any book of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 16 tell us that God has revealed to us the mind of Jesus Christ through the teachings of the Holy Spirit. The teachings of the Holy Spirit can be found in his word. If anyone wants to know what Jesus thinks about a particular subject or what Jesus did in a given situation, we need to look no further than the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Bible. The Bible contains the thoughts and wisdom of God. So that's all we have to do is study his word. And then the study of the Bible, it gives us faith. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Do you like faith or is your faith weak? All of us can, exp all of us can experience a crisis of faith from time to time. Where do we go to get our faith strengthened, we go straight to the word of God. The Bible tells us the joy of the Lord is my strength. When you know what God says when we are going through these times and when we are, our faith seems so weak, we can ask God to give us the joy and the strength that we need to renew us to instill in us that faith that we need to go on to conquer this thing. Because the Bible goes on and says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And that's talking about Satan in the world. But when we have God within us, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus because we have Jesus on our side. And we have a way of restoring our relationship back to God through our faith. And then we just get stronger and stronger through his word. A strong and vibrant faith in God is exercised through the regular studying of his word. We have to study his word. Then it brings us salvation. Salvation. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the, in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. That's John 20, 30 and 31. John is telling us why 
he is exactly telling us why he wrote this book. He's letting us know that the reason for the entire Bible was written so that we might believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and that we might be saved by believing on him. That's the main purpose of the Bible. It was, it was God's way of redeeming man back to him. It is the primary purpose to bring the reader to faith in Christ Jesus so that believing that we may have eternal life. Then it gives examples. And that comes from 1 Corinthians 10, 11. It says, now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our, for our admission unto whom the ends of the world are come. Several of the pitfalls that, be, that the Israelites ran into was in the wilderness was experienced out of disobedience. So what God wants to do, he wants to equip us on what happens to those that are disobedient and what happens to those that are obedient. So the word of God teaches us both because the reason that we read so much about the shortcomings of people in the Bible is that we might learn from their mistakes. And the more we learn from their mistakes, the less uh, possibility are that we will commit the same errors. So be when we are doing these things and we make a mistake ourselves, all we've got to do is consult, consult God's word and see what happens. So the wise man learns from the mistakes of others. And the Bible uh, provides several examples of people who please God as well as people who did not please God. And we can learn much from the experience of both. Then joy. The word of God give us joy. I, I just mentioned a few minutes ago that the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is my strength. It also tells us that God, and, and, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. First John 1, 4. We want our job, we want our cup to run over. And one thing about it, the Lord himself said, he said that he's able to do exceedingly and abundant and above all that we can ask or think. In Ephesians 3.20, this is what uh, Paul was telling us, that whatever we stand in need of, whatever we need from God, he is willing to give us. But there are conditions, and that is we have to get to know him. We have to study his word. And then he gives us blessings. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecies and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. That's Revelation 1 3. Now, the book of Revelation is the only book that promised blessings from the Lord to all who read and to keep the words of it. In the conclusion to the Bible, in Revelation itself, God let us know that blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecies, of these prophecy, of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. See, one thing about it, when we know God's word and we can take it like David did it, and we can hide it in our hearts so we may not sin against thee, then we have, we can go out there, no matter what comes up against us, no matter where we was in bondage or captivity, no matter where we are, we can do like da da uh, Daniel. We can pray three times a day because no, we know how God was pleased with Daniel. We know David as a man uh, after God's own heart, but we also know David as a man that sin did a lot of sinning. So that let us know that we have a way of redeeming ourselves back through God. And all we've got to do is study his word, read his words from Genesis to Revelation, and he will bless us and he will fulfill his promises. God is not man that he will go back on his promises. Then you may ask, how should we study the Bible? We've listed 10 ways in our study guides to study the word of God. I'm just going to briefly go through them. Number one. Dedicate time to the Word of God. Make some time in your busy schedule. Let Him be the priority in your life. Pray to understand the Word of God. The Scriptures will not just come to you. You have to pray and ask God to give you His wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of His Word. Then put forth real effort. Make an effort coming to understand the Word of God. Study the word. 
There are many ways that we can study the word, and we have those. We have those through all types of versions of Bibles. We have also concordance, and we have dictionaries. We have commentaries, etc. different ways of studying God's word. And then make sure we have a purpose. We select a purpose or a, type, or a topic that we want to study. You may want to know something about divorce. You may want to know something about uh, any subject it won't. You just want to know a closer walk with God. Whatever you want from God, you can study it. All you have to do is seek him and you will find him. There is nothing happening today that has not happened in the Bible. Use a spiritual journal. Keep a spiritual journal uh, as a way of knowing what you, what you are looking for and search, 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 searching, excuse me, searching the word of God for. Invite the spirit with good music. Sometimes you just get some soft music and begin to worship and praise God in your own way and ask him to come into your presence as you study his word. Humble yourself before the Lord. We have to humble ourselves. We have to be diligent learning the word and we have to ask him to take away our pride because pride comes before destruction, and we don't want to be destroyed. So we ask God to take his word and hide it in our hearts. Line upon line, precept upon precept means a commandment of direction given as a rule or action or conduct. So we want him to study word upon word, take one word at a time, and learn what God is saying through that word. Personally apply the word of God. Learn to apply his word daily. Be diligently and most of all, don't give up. And then you may ask the question, why should I memorize scriptures? One of the most powerful ways you can transform your spiritual life is to memorize scripture. Proverbs 7, 2 says, Guard my words as your most precious possession. Write them down and also keep them deep within your heart. You may not believe you can memorize Bible verses, but that's just not true. You can memorize what you want to memorize. It's a, matter of, it's a matter of motivation rather than skill. We've got to learn. And the way you can memorize it, we should memorize scriptures for several reasons. It's the number one tool for resisting temptation. It helps us make wise decisions. It strengthens us when we are under stress. It comforts us when we are sad. It help us witness to unbelievers. So let us study God's word. If you don't know how to study or you don't understand King James Version, there are many versions and translations. Find one that will meet you that you can understand and use all the other A's and tools. In my closing, I want to say this by Rachel Burner. Remember, the word of God is a priceless gift that we either accept or reject. To God be the glory.